G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the south side of the map in the color orange, playing as a random sieve that turned out to be Rus. It is random sieve. And on the north side of the map in the color purple, playing as the English, we've got divine DFP. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We're here on dry, a dry, I was gonna say a dry Arabia. Dry Arabia, as, <laughs> as I tell you what, the older I get, the more I worry about my brain. Uh, I think this is probably something that everybody will get uh, as, as they get older, but you start picking up on little things. Like, I've noticed my, myself stuttering a little bit recently. I forget things. I tell you what, it, it, it worries me. But I guess we've all got to deal with that, don't we, as we get older. But anyway, welcome, welcome. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the like button on the video. Definitely helps out as, obviously, we're heading towards that Sultan's Ascent expansion pack. Helps those videos pick up traction. And speaking of traction, have a look at this. Divine DFP with some early traction on that wheelbarrow coming in before that one minute mark. There you go. A little bit after the one minute mark. Not too bad for him. We've got ourselves a good matchup today. English versus the Rus. A matchup that has got a lot of history behind it when it comes to Age of Empires 4. This matchup, I, I'm sure you guys will remember the good old days of horse archer spam. We don't really see that so much anymore. Uh, but you never used to see it against the English. And the reason why was because of the longbow. The longbow just absolutely destroyed the horse archer. Uh, so I'm curious exactly what we're going to have up our sleeves today. But when we talk about the meta, when we talk about the expectation that we have between these two players, I would say that you've got Divine playing the English. There's a very good chance, an incredibly good chance you see three TCs. And the reason why I say that is because of this spawn that he's got. I've just realized looking at it, have a look at this bad boy. You have got a gold next to a stone. And the reason why I'm excited about this is because normally these two are far apart. Normally you've got the stone on one side, the gold on the other. Which means that when you're putting that second TC down, you've got to make a decision. Do I go on the gold? Do I go on the stone? Or do I go on the hunt? Here, Divine doesn't have to make that decision. It's already been made for him. He puts it right here in the middle of these two resources, protects the stone and the gold, and gives him a guaranteed third TC that he can go for. So that's where I'm expecting he looks to go for that third TC, Divine. Notoriously aggressive. I say notoriously aggressive when it comes to the economy, but I don't think that's the right way to phrase it. I think notoriously greedy when it comes to the economy is probably the better way to say it. On the other side, though, the Rus, they've been going for a whole bunch of different strategies recently, uh, but the most common one's obviously that second town center. We've been seeing second town centers coming out from a lot of Rus players as we see that 100 bounty threshold just being crossed there. Expect to see a Kremlin drop down towards the front of this base. He's looking to drop it down on the gold as well. Nice little spot that he's got. And expect to see a couple of villagers move out towards this stone. Also, uh, that that would be my suspicion. I'd be very surprised to see that. It's been a long time since we've seen, say, like a naked fast castle from the Rus. Or what, what other options have they got? I mean, you guys will remember the the, the great meta uh, that once existed for the Rus where you could just spam archers. They were the good days. The Going for the Guz build. You know what? I, I kind of miss those Aussies. You know, uh, uh, one of the things that uh, I've noticed as, as the years go on as well is, is you, you miss those friends that you make, don't you? Like, I remember meeting Hut at Walla Lol. That was great, getting to spend some time with him there and just to provide a bit of insight about that. So he made it to the top 16 of Walla Lol and he was so happy that he did it. And he told me, Jongo, once I finish playing these games at Walla Lol, I'm never going to play Age of Empires again. He said, I, j I just kind of had it, you know, I got to move on with my life and all that sort of stuff. And he was just there. He was just vibing. He was having such a great time. And he didn't care if he won. He didn't care if he lost. He was just having a great time. And I admire that about him. But at the same time, I miss him. He was a, he was a good character. And all those Aussie guys were. You know, Dinky King, another one. Iago's another one. Really a, a, a lovely part of the community that we miss out. And of course, how can I forget my, my boy Snooper? Uh, another one that, uh, that we've lost. So hopefully with the expansion pack coming out, we get to see those familiar Australian names again. We get to reminisce about old times and enjoy the new ones. But let's take a look at the north side of the map as we've got a council hall coming down. A little bit of an interesting position here for the council hall as well for Divine towards the front of the base. Something I did not expect to see is this because normally what you see happen is the council hall will try and go towards the wood line as close as you can get it uh, without blocking farms. So normally that would mean like a position, say right here, would be really decent uh, because you are got to be putting farms in the front of your base because this is where your town centers are going to be. So your town centers are going to be able to defend those villages. You're not too fast about whether those farms die or not because the town centers are out there. But we do see it is going to be a second a second TC start here coming through from Divine. No real surprises with that. Six villages out on stone at the moment. Seventh one coming out now. So TC should be... I don't know exactly how much space he's got here. I suspect he's going to delete this mining camp and then you're going to have the TC placed down immediately adjacent to it all. Uh, that way it's protecting everything, but 
Ajup's come through on the other side. It's going to be Random Sif looking to pick up an early cavalry opening here. You see the horseman coming out of all things, the horseman, which is interesting. It makes total sense against the English, which naturally want to be making those ranged longbow units, and they have the ability to do so through the council hall. So it does make sense in that regard. But the other thing to note is that you've got a little less poking power when it comes to villagers. So do keep that in mind as you begin to raid with the Rus on that north side of the map. Meanwhile, we're right on board with Divine as he looks to begin this defense. We see him still out on the map, managing to spot out a couple of uh, a couple of wolves. And indeed, we do see the deleted uh, mining camp. And now that... Look at that. Look at the, the Rus horsemen trying to find a way through here. Unfortunately, almost gets surrounded. Villagers here just... Doing, doing what they do best. This is... <laughs> I mean, this is part of the reason why going for that early horseman just... It, it makes sense against the longbows. Doesn't really make sense against... Uh, or f for a raid. Uh, but it looks like he's not going to go particularly forward with it. So I guess he still does protect the stone. But prioritizing it down on the gold. And I want to have a look at, and ride on board with him as he begins to consider whether he goes for the second on the third TC. Mainly because... Or rather, rather whether he goes for the third TC or just leaves it with the second. So, ideally, we'd look to see on the opposite side of the map here. So, uh, hopefully, Divine's going to be doing this. Should be coming out and checking the stone in the back of the enemy base. Now, he might just suspect that it's going to be a second TC. So, he knows what's up. But when it comes to the third TC for Divine, I would be expecting he's going to be looking to put it back here on the deer. Because this deer is absolutely beautiful. He can throw down the mill. He, honestly, even if he wants to, he doesn't even need to throw the TC down right here. As we hear the town center towards the front covering up against those knights imagine if that first unit instead of being a horseman was a knight the difference this game would have because those villagers all of a sudden let, let's just just uh what's the what's the word um not not hinder me what just uh I'll, allow me to e expand three armor against the horseman uh which i'm sure is on the map we know that it's there uh where is it mr random Civ? it's down here uh versus the two ranged armor you might not think that's a big deal, but when you're talking about the numbers that the English Vils have got, five damage, that's the difference between two damage and three damage. And when you're talking three damage and there's 10 Vils, that's 30 damage a pop coming through. That means they're going to almost four shot this horseman. Uh, compare that to the knight, which is taking 20 damage. You're talking about a 10 shot. So it's a 10 shot versus a two shot. That's a pretty big difference and important to consider when you're looking for that early raid. So something for all Rus players to, to consider. But the third TC will just come down on the stone instead. And he's got a beautiful spot up against the wood line. I didn't even think about that as a possibility. He's got a nice little position in here. I, th I suspect... Actually, I think he might be a little bit short. That's awkward. Uh, I, I don't think he'll, fu he'll be fussed that much uh, with it. But uh, I think he won't have space to fit a full ring of farms around this. Third town center is up. As you would expect for our English protagonist here at the eight minute mark. So not a bad little timing there for him. Scout is out. He's just spotting it out. And isn't this such a passive... I feel like the meta at the moment is so passive. Is it just me or are we just seeing really, really passive plays coming out? You know, fast Imperials, left, right, and center. I, I say that, but I guess we did just come off those couple of games where there was so much action in the Feudal Age. Though, to be fair, they were games from Moo. And, uh, well, that guy's just a beast when it comes to the Feudal Age. So that's to be expected. But I guess th there's also been, while there has been those games, there have been these passive ones that just kind of sit, they just kind of chill. And that's what we've got today. So, not a lot of units out on the map. Just the two TCs at the moment on the south side of the map. Up against the three TCs in the north. And you've got yourself a bit of a bit of an interesting position. Because now all of a sudden, our English player is scaling. Whereas our Rus player, he's on a timer. Which means that th this is this is a good thing and it's a bad thing. It's a good thing for the Rus player because it means that his timing, which is the Castle Age, is going to be perfect. It's a bad thing because if it doesn't work, he's going to be in trouble. I'm curious to see exactly how Divine looks to go about defending it. He's already got a nice little villager lead beginning to build up, up seven villagers. Just remember, every minute that goes by, Divine, he's going to be training nine villagers. Compare that to his opponent, who's only going to be training six villagers. And obviously, you can take that from after 10 minutes. That's an extra 60 versus an extra 90 villagers. So an, uh, an extra 30 villagers in total for Divine just by having that extra TC. But we do see the edge up coming through. Looks like it's going to be the high trade house coming in here. Not a bad little spot. I think that's about the best you could have gotten it. Yeah, this is way too big to consider throwing it down here. So pretty much about the best you will get it in here. We check up towards that top side of the map. And uh, a little bit of a, a raid attempt. Not going to be finding too much success. No villagers even taking damage here. The scout obviously spotting it out with the high trade house coming through. You can expect that Divine's going to be looking for an, a, uh, 
a, a landmark, probably a bit of a defensive landmark. Might even just be leaving this space here for the White Tower. Might even consider just deleting the mining camp and throwing down the White Tower in the front. I think that probably makes the most sense. And have a look at this. He's got the farms going down behind the back of the base rather than towards the front, towards these TCs. He's just going to put them towards the back of the base, keep them safe that way. That makes a, a bit of sense. Check in now over on the south side of the map as the age up comes through. 10 minutes and 23 seconds. Not a bad little timing here for our Rus player. Lovely landmark. And how, what, what's our number? I'm going with 100 and 118. Come on. What have we got? 118 gold a minute. Well, I, I forget what the tick rate is. So maybe we need to come back in a minute's time. Is it always like this? Surely it's not always like this, right? Or is it only after it starts generating gold that it's like that? Hmm. Well, there we go. 71. Okay, 71. So I'm assuming it, it's, it comes in every 30 seconds. So 142. So I was a little bit off. A little bit off. Quite a bit off, actually. Upgrades starting to come through as well. Have a look at this. We've got veterancy coming through on the knights. Well, not really veterancy. And look at this. Triple barracks. Man at arms on the front side here. Got upgrades coming through for defense as well. Looking to try and begin pressuring on the wood line. He'll find it as well. The age up about to come through for divine. It's going to be the white tower. No real surprise there. And it's going to be on the main town center that he looks for it. Not going towards the front. He wants to protect the back as well. Cognizant of any threat from the rear. And going to pull villagers now. 39 villagers on this landmark. And i got to agree with this. This, this is so smart. Uh, and it's something that I encourage all English players that are going to be playing this style. You always want to rush this landmark up as much as you can if you're under pressure like this. Because this is going to buy you so much flexibility on your defense. You can see right now, look how much damage this bad boy does. He's going to he's gonna almost one-shot this. The men at arms, the knights, they're not going to stand a chance. And now Divine's left in a bit of a difficult position. So he's going to have to play it out in castle here. You, you're going to see a, a crossbow mass beginning to build. It's got a little bit of resources in the bank, and the crossbow numbers are starting to rise now. So going up to three crossbows. And the question is, how does Random Civ crack this nut before that crossbow mass comes through? And I don't think there's an answer to that. I, I don't think he, it's possible to do. I think it's natural that the crossbow mass is going to build up here. You've got that double... The, the, the double double production, realistically. You've got the, the White Tower and the Council Hall producing crossbows both double as fast as any normal building. So you've got the equivalent of four archery rangers here producing crossbows as fast as you possibly can. There's no real risk of dying to men at arms here. So how do you crack this position? I feel like battering rams could definitely be decent, but then you've got to deal with the villagers. So how do you deal with the villagers? I think there needs to be a combination here of men at arms, mangonels, and... Uh, and battering rams. I think that's going to be it. You could go for trebuchets, but trebuchets are going to be very slow. You're going to be able to repair them, or re repair against them, rather. Um, and you're just going to be able to buy a lot of time um, if your enemy is going treb. So I think battering rams, mangonels, probably a bit of a better combo here for him. So we'll have to watch and see exactly how Random Civ looks to play it. Give me money, he is Conk 3, so he knows what he's doing when it comes to this matchup. But now, coming forward, a little bit of a crossbow mass. Ideally, what you want to be getting to is one-shot territory. So once you're in one-shot territory, so you can see each crossbow does 21 damage. Consider that the enemy is, has got six ranged armor. You're talking about 15 damage each. These guys got 155 health, so you need 11 crossbows to one-shot each of these uh, each of these men at arms. And then you also want a little bit of a buffer just in case you lose a crossbow, just in case a knight comes in or something like that and you, you've lost one. So 12, 13, and you can see that's exactly where he's gotten to. It's exactly where he stopped. And now he begins saving up resources. We've seen it before. Will we see it again? The English Fast Imperial. It's been happening all week, Fast Imperials. In fact, I'm going to take it back. I'm going to say it's been happening all month, these Fast Imperials. Do we dare see it again? And look at this. Beautiful raids coming in from the top, from the bottom. Villagers are out on farms so far away from these TCs, but you can see that he is just going to react immediately. Only loses the one villager. And he's buying himself plenty of time. Crossbow will go down. Or rather, a uh, men at arms will go down. And we do hear relics getting picked up behind this. At the moment, it's two against one in favor of Random Civ, our Rus player. First relic does come in. Manages to put the relic inside the monastery. Nice and safe. Towards the front of the base. Now, this is great because it means that you can get the, uh, the monk out really quickly onto the relic. But it's also a double-edged sword because if the enemy comes knocking, they're going to be able to take this out very quickly and take that relic, deny that relic away from you very quickly. How many villagers have we got on farms here? 38 farms. My lord, that is quite a bit. Uh, I think there is a serious threat of Imperial Age here. And I want to return back to that question of how do you respond or what's the best way to respond to this as the Rus? And I really feel like... Going for that Mangadel is just going to be able to force that fight. You know, if your enemy wants to try and take the fight, they can go for it. 
crossbow's beginning to move up. Uh, but, I, I, I guess by the same token, there's a lot that the English player can do to defend. Realistically, they've got access to the Springwood very quickly. 15 seconds for each Springwood from the White Tower. So they don't have to think too much about that. Oh, there's a couple of Mangonels. Wonderful. Here's a Springwood in 15 seconds, right? Uh, then on top of that, there's Battering Rams. I can clean that out. So I feel like the English is at quite an advantage here in this position. And now Divine going to continue pushing out. Crossbow numbers beginning to build on both sides. Men at Arms looking to try and get in on the front line. But just going to be chasing away those crossbows and expect to see... A Berkshire Palace? No way. No way. Look at this. Good luck cracking this nut. I can't believe we are witnessing this right now, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my Lord. How do you ever beat... Wh what do we even call this? This is the... This is a masterclass in English defense. This is the English masterclass. You are seeing it here first, folks. Wow. Good luck ever getting the nutcracker out when this guy is involved. Oh, my absolute Lord. Look at the size of that thing. Wow. <laughs> wow, I am, uh, I'm getting shivers down my spine. This is, this is shaping up to be a beautiful game coming in. The trebuchet is out. He's got to be careful with it, though. As those crossbows look to move forward, we start seeing the upgrades. It's going to be enclosures coming through the first Imperial Age tech for Divine. And now on the defensive here, he's got all the tools at his disposal he needs to hold on in this game, playing one of the best defensive civilizations that there are. Think about this. Number one, extra attack speed. Number two, extra arrows from your town center. Number three, your villagers have got bows. And I'm not talking about the headsets. I'm talking about the ones they have on their backs and they pull out when there's units nearby. Number four, you've got insane levels of production from the council hall, from the white tower, and of course, from the Berkshire. You have five, effectively five production buildings right here. You've got flexibility to move into siege if you want to, or extra quick siege if you really want to. There's so much flexibility with what he's done here. Not a single production building out on the field at the moment. There's the first one, a barracks at 17 minutes. Don't tell me that this isn't crazy, that this isn't ludicrous. It is a naked, fast Imperial, and he's just, he's 100% able to do it. Gold is going to become a problem, though. We can see that that gold on the front is not going to be happening. Gold over towards that west side of the base, obviously, has finished. So he needs to think about secondary sources, and now those crossbows will be able to clean up these knights harassing the villagers. But once again, we head to the front side. And Random Civ, well, he's in a bit of a dilly of a pickle. He's down 30 villagers. We talked about that number very, very specifically about 10 minutes ago. Because 10 minutes ago is when we had that third town center come up. So that is the difference that you're seeing between two TCs versus three TCs. And that is a sizable difference. Now, it's important to note it's four relics against none. That relic does fall onto the ground at the front of the base. So expect to see a warrior monk coming up here shortly to snipe that one away. But behind the scenes, we also see the Knights. They've got their plus two ranged armor boy as Fortitude is through as well. So they've got a little bit of extra health. But Divine, going to be holding on for dear life here as those trebuchets begin to shell down the rest of his base. What's important to note also is that if he loses these TCs at this point, he's still okay. Because these TCs have been training villagers for the last 10 minutes. They've been making villagers though that whole time. And they've carried you to where you need to be. That is with a sizable villager lead right now. Our Rus player begins to push up keep very very defensive for where this should be ideally i'd love this keep up as far as you can get it without being attacked by the Berkshire or on the villagers so you'd have the keep down right there with your villagers just on the outside so you'd want to test exactly where that range of the Berkshire is and then look to try and put that down market comes down divine looking to do a little bit of jostling i think he needs wood right now more than anything and you can see the trading coming through not sure exactly what happened can we have a look and, and see yeah it's wood he's purchased wood um, and we're going to be looking to throw down more production as he's losing production on the front of the, or rather just units on the front of the base. We've got houses that have gone down. And have we got, we don't have a siege workshop yet, which means we're only dealing with basic sprinkles. These guys don't have their plus two ranged attack just yet, but Divine's under pressure. Now keep in mind, he's got this trifecta of town centers that will look to cover him if he gets in trouble, not to mention the Berkshire, not to mention the White Tower, not to mention every other defensive ability the English players have got. But one thing to note, elite upgrades still not in. They're coming in now. A little bit late. As long as they come in before the fight. That's what's important. They need to come in before the fight. He also needs to make sure he researches armor cladding. He does have it, which is wonderful. Gives him that extra little bit of armor. So the elite upgrades on the way through. Hand cannon is joining the battle as well. And look at look at the look at how quickly Divine is catching up on that military count to his opponent. He's up 40 villagers at this point in the game. Now on that south side. Definitely feels like our Rus player 
may have missed his opportunity. The dev I, I, I suspect his best op option, opportunity, his best option this game would have been to go into the battering ramps, would have been to go into the mangonels, maybe even some sprinkles of his own. But it's always tough when you're up against an English player that can just spam them out that quickly. You can see he's managed to spot out exactly where that line is. And now he's going to start to work down the Berkshire Palace, the defense. Will we see Divine hold it? That's going to be the question here. The Trebs continue to siege him down. No real battle yet to have been fought. It all comes down to this. The sacred sites have been taken. If Divine's able to vanquish the enemy army, it will be over very quickly. By the same token, if we've got our English player that loses everything to the Rus, well, that's probably going to be a little bit slower of a trickle when it comes to the death. The English have got a lot of ways to get back into the game. Not to mention they've, they're already on their enclosures, which means they're having an absolute party over that side of the map. But now beginning to push up another outpost, looking to try and find a way through. Springle's firing down the emplacement with quite a bit of range on it. Remember, these guys have got a decent range on them. Nine tiles. He can actually buff it up, and now it looks like he's going to be heading in to the battle. We begin to enter into... The cinematic mode is the crossbows together with the hand cannoneers fight on the backside. Sprinkled v. Sprinkled. Men at arms up against men at arms. It's just a, a big mash of units on the front. But remember, he's got those elite upgrades. He's got those hand cannoneers in the back and he is decimating this front line, eating it alive completely. The hand cannoneers with that extra attack speed just eating alive. Look at the crossbows. They don't stand a chance. And just like that, the fast Imperial comes out today in force. Divine DFP just eating his opponent alive. He's like Jeffrey Dahmer right now. This is beautiful to witness. We can see that the trebuchets down here, they're underneath the keeps, but at the end of the day, you have not been able to kill your opponent. They've made it to Imperial Age. They've done it with three TCs. They've got a huge economic lead, and now everything is going to come crashing down as you begin to approach your opponent's base. We'll bring that UI back in, and we can take a look exactly what that military number's at, and you can see the difference right here. 182 pop versus 113. Behind the scenes, sure, you've got four relics. Sure, you've got three sacred sites, but you have got absolutely no hope of winning this game. Now beca now begins the men-at-arms spam towards you. You can see the men-at-arms are still yet to get their elite army tactics, but they've been elite upgraded. They're doing that extra damage. They've got plenty of armor on them. Look at that. Ten armor on these bad boys. You ain't getting through that, my friend. And slowly... The push keeps coming forward with Divine. And good game is going to get called there with Divine Victorious as he takes out the Rus with an absolute English masterclass on the Fast Imperial. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you go check him out. I'll leave a link in the description of where you can watch him live over on Twitch. And if you haven't already, check the pinned comment for the Sultan's Ascend expansion pack. It's coming out November 14th. I'll see you there.